This is Geometry, Unit 3.1, talking about conditional statements. A conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts. A hypothesis and a conclusion. We're going to talk about if-then form. If-then form is a conditional statement in which the if portion contains the hypothesis and the then portion contains the conclusion. Now we state that same thing again. The hypothesis is the F part and the conclusion is the then part. So we'll talk about a conditional statement. It doesn't have to be if-then format. A conditional statement doesn't have to be. Our conditional statements will typically be in an if-then, though. Converse. The then and if are switched to create a new conditional statement. So we're going to look at these statements and we're going to decide if they're true or they're false. And if they're false, we're going to write a counterexample which is a specific case for which the conjecture is false. Not another if-then statement. It's really a specific situation. If the angle is 32 degrees, might be your answer. 32 degrees. That would be a specific case for why something might be false. Here are some conditional statements. Notice that these are not in if-then format. We're going to write the conditional statement in if-then format. Today is July 4th, so we are not in school. So we're going to write that in if-then format. So we're going to put an if in the beginning, and we're going to squeeze a then somewhere in the middle. If Today is July 4th, then we are not in school. Would you consider that statement true or false? Now, the way we determine true or false, the if part, if today is the 4th of July, that's never false. Okay, the if part we accept to be true. So consider yourself zoomed forward into the 4th of July. Would you expect to be at school on the 4th of July? I wouldn't expect so. So if today is the 4th of July, we accept that to be true. Is this statement true or false? then we are not in school. That sounds very reasonable. We would not be in school if today was the 4th of July. So in that case, since it is true, we don't have a counterexample. All right, so we'll just leave it blank, ignore that for now. We're going to leave it blank if it's true. It was true, so we don't need to write a counterexample. There are no counterexamples for when something is true. Now, a converse. Looking up at our notes, a converse, the then and the if are switched to create a new conditional statement. We're going to switch the order. Well, let's talk about the order. Underline the hypothesis and circle the conclusion. 
So we're going to underline what we think the hypothesis is. Okay, the hypothesis is the beginning part of the statement, if today is the 4th of July. What's the big deal about the if portion here? What's the main topic? 4th of July. So that's going to be your hypothesis. Conclusion. Your conclusion, we are going to circle. The conclusion is what's going to happen on the 4th of July. Not being in school. Not in school. Okay, so we have our hypothesis, and the result of that is our conclusion. So we're going to take those and switch them. So if today, now what other words do we need to use here to make it flow? If today, how do we say that? We are not. So even coming all the way to pick up the we are part would help it flow. If today we are not in school, then it is July 4th. Would you consider that true or false? If we're not in school today, we have to accept that to be true. Okay? The if portion, we don't question. The if portion is accepted. We're not in school. Does that mean it's the 4th of July? Okay, so you feel that this is a false statement. What other option do you have? What other situation would this happen? If today we're not in school, then what's another situation? It's the weekend. That would be probably pretty, pretty accurate. All right. How about any other reasons out there? Holiday. Many different holidays out there. Um, a very common one that we're not in school for. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, if today we're not in school, then it is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is your counter example. It's a specific case. There could be many of them. You just write the specific case. We do not write the whole if-then statement for the counter. We just give the specific case or which it is false. All right, let's try this one. An obtuse angle measures 112 degrees. How could we switch that into an if-then statement? To help us write an if-then statement, we're going to write our if-then statement in the same order that we were given this statement. So since this statement gives it obtuse before the 112, we're going to write our if-then in the same order. So if an angle is obtuse, then its measure is 112 degrees. What do we think about that? We think that that could be false. You, we're thinking that if an angle is obtuse, if I draw an obtuse angle, I might not draw 112 degrees. What could I draw? 130 degrees, 150 degrees, anything up to 180, anything down to 90. Okay, there's lots of different answers in there. Any of those would be a counterexample. You don't have to rewrite the if-then. You only give the specific case for which it is false. 
And in this case, we could all give a different answer. What would be our converse? If an angle is obtuse, what's our hypothesis there? That is going to be our converse. Very good. Our hypothesis is going to be the obtuse portion, an angle being obtuse. The conclusion is the measure of 112 degrees. So we underlined our hypothesis. We circled our conclusion. Our converse is going to be switching those. So if, how am I going to talk about 112? What words would be appropriate to use to get to talk about 112 degrees? What should I use in here? If an angle measures 112 degrees, so it's okay to have some of the words here that we're developing in. That really justified that is obtuse is your hypothesis. The angle part was just kind of explaining what you're dealing with. The hypothesis was the obtuse, and the conclusion is that it's 112. So if an angle measures 112, we put that first then it is obtuse. What do you think about that? That is going to be a true statement. Because if I draw a 112 degree angle, then every 112 degree angle will always be obtuse. That follows the definition of obtuse between 90 and 180 degrees. So we're not going to have. So here, we can leave blank if it's true. You don't need to write that. But that's just letting you know that you don't have to put in words in there just to, to answer it. We, we leave this blank if it's going to be true. We fill it in if it's going to be false. On the homework, we do talk about Venn diagram. So I want to show you real quick a Venn diagram. On page 23, this is part of your homework actually, just to discuss this since we're on the video and we can discuss this a little bit. A Venn diagram is made up of these circles. And the different circles, parts of the circle are going to have different hypothesis or conclusions in it. So if you have geometry, then you have Mr. Weber, or if you have Mr. Weber, then you have geometry. You can write conditional statements given a Venn diagram. If you have Mr. Weber for math class, then you have geometry. So if you put your pencil in the Mr. Weber location, are you also in the geometry location? If you put your pencil in the geometry location, do you have to be in the Mr. Weber location? So this implies if you have Mr. Weber, then you have geometry. The converse is if you have geometry, then you have Mr. Weber, and the converse would be false. You could still have geometry and not be in Mr. Weber's class, but if you're in Mr. Weber's class, you're going to have geometry. So the if part is going to be the smaller circle, and the then part is going to be the larger circle. All right? That's how we would typically write our Venn diagrams. And with that knowledge, you can then move forward and deal with this Michigan and Mackinac Bridge and answer some crazy questions along the way and create a Venn diagram about Red Wings players.
But those are our notes for conditional statements.